Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I'm your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope all of you are having a fantastic Monday, wherever you may be. We have got a lot to get to. Uh, we're going to be off and rolling here very rapidly. Uh, but let me go ahead and tell you a couple of different things about this week. First of all, did not have a great gambling weekend. Did not have a stellar performance. But I have to say this. I have to say this right off the top. Swing and a miss uh, from me on many of the college football gambling picks. I got to go back to work. Work like heck to get better. And, however, I made up for it in the NFL because I am going to be your crowned king on Lock It In this week. All right. Going to have to block somebody right off the top who is really annoying me. And he is gone forever. Uh, all right. Uh, somebody said my hair looked rough. All right. First of all, that's hate language. Not acceptable. Secondly, I just got out of the shower. So the reason why my hair looks rough is because I just got out of the shower. Off the top as well, I want to say I met a lot of different people who uh, listen to the show, read the site, pay attention to OutKick at, uh, at the game between Georgia and Tennessee. Thanks to everybody who said hi to me. Now let's dive right in. Let's dive right into the stories. This NBA story about Daryl Morey tweeting that he supports democracy in Hong Kong and the way the league has responded to it is everything I have been arguing about the NBA's fake, made-up, woke uh, BS since all of this woke era in sports took off. But if you are not familiar with what exactly has been going on, let me just give you a little bit of a background here. Okay, here's what set off all of this ridiculousness, all right? Uh, uh, Daryl Morey, who is the GM of the Houston Rockets, said, tweeted something uh, while he's overseas. He tweeted, fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong. That's it. Fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong. The Houston Rockets GM tweeted that. If you're not familiar with the situation in China or what is going on right now, in China, uh, Hong Kong is a semi-autonomous region. And as part of being a semi-autonomous region, in recent years, I believe starting in 1999, China has had an increasing influence over Hong Kong, which has still got democracy, as opposed to China, which is a communist uh, state. Uh, and does not provide total freedom to its people or anywhere near close to total freedom. So as a result, the NBA and the Houston Rockets have apologized for that tweet. The NBA said as, uh, as follows. Let me read this to you because it's crazy. I couldn't believe when I saw this quote response from the NBA. The NBA said... Uh, that they understood that his comments have deeply offended many of our friends and fans in China, which is regrettable. While Daryl has made it clear that his tweet does not represent the Rockets or the NBA, I want to stop here for a sec too. That's insane. The NBA isn't willing to endorse the idea that democracy is a good thing. The NBA said, no, no, no. This guy, Daryl Morey, who said that he supports democracy... That doesn't represent the NBA's official stance. The NBA is coming down on the side of a dictatorship, a communist dictatorship in China. As if that were not bad enough, James Harden said, we apologize. You know, we love China on behalf of him and Russell Westbrook. James Harden and Russell Westbrook apologized to a Chinese communist uh, country for an American citizen saying that he believed in democracy. What in the world is going on here? The NBA has so bungled this and by the way they also put out a statement which was different in Chinese than it was in English which apologized in Chinese and they said didn't apologize in English although I just read you this statement. The NBA has so blown this situation that they have managed to ally Keith Olbermann and myself, who are some of the only outspoken people in the world of sports actually ripping the NBA for this, which is what I want to go into now. Okay, Adam Silver eliminated the word owner because he believed it was racially insensitive and offensive. 
to use the word owner. He replaced it with governor. So the commissioner of the NBA is more offended by the use of the word owner in the United States of America than he is by being forced to apologize to a communist country with oodles of human rights violations because an American citizen had the gall to say he supported democracy. As if that were not bad enough. The NBA set the precedent a couple of years ago when they pulled their All-Star game out of Charlotte, North Carolina over a transgender bathroom bill debate. Now, that whole story was manufactured outrage on behalf of Republicans and Democrats to argue because there's nothing that bad going on in the country in the grand scheme of things. So they have to fight over whether people are going to be able to go to the bathroom if they are transgender in public bathrooms in North Carolina. Mind you, there's not a single example of this actually being an issue. And it was a, a, a concern that didn't exist anywhere in the 1970s, in the 1980s, in the 1990s, and in the 2000s, and in the 2010s. My whole life, everybody who wants to go to the bathroom of their choice, do you know where they've gone to the bathroom of choice? The one that they look like! There's not Crocodile Dundee standing outside of the bathroom checking to see whether or not somebody's genitals correctly apply to the men's or women's bathroom. The NBA got woke here for no reason. Charlotte, North Carolina didn't do anything wrong. The state of North Carolina hadn't done anything wrong. Yet the NBA pulled their All-Star game out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Now they are going to China, to communist China where people don't have rights, where people don't have basic freedoms, where in Hong Kong people are protesting and standing up for the rights of basic democracy that we take for granted in this country and not one NBA player not, uh, not LeBron James, not any of the Warriors who have been so critical of Donald Trump, not Steph Curry, not Kevin Durant, not one player has actually come out to support Daryl Morey saying, hey, democracy is a good thing in this world. Not one player. Worst of all, not one coach has either. Every time Donald Trump tweets, Greg Popovich runs right to the media and talks about how offended he is. Every time Donald Trump does something he doesn't like, Steve Kerr runs right to the media and whines about how offended he is. So they can react to Donald Trump's tweets, Steve Kerr and Greg Popovich, but they can't defend the tweet of one of their colleagues in the NBA who came out in favor of democracy? They can't actually step up and speak truth to power in China, but they want to speak truth to power in America? You know why? Because in America, we have First Amendment rights and freedom and the media defends all these guys every time they go after the President of the United States. They praise Greg Popovich. They praise Steve Kerr. But the minute that they actually can have an impact, do you know what they do? All these players, all these coaches, the commissioner, everybody, Adam Silver, Greg Popovich, Steve Kerr, LeBron James, James Harden, they all turn tail and curl up in the fetal position and let China treat them like a bunch of punks. That's the truth. And the NBA wants to be this global woke universe. Well, guess what? They are complete and total hypocrites. They are frauds. Now, LeBron James always says, oh, they tell us to shut up and dribble. I want to be more than an athlete. Here's your chance, LeBron James. You are in China right now. You have an opportunity. Some would say an obligation to stand up in front of the public and say I am LeBron James and I believe in democracy for everyone in the world black, white, Asian, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. That's what I believe. If you want to be Muhammad Ali step up to the plate and actually be Muhammad Ali. Don't be boring and pedestrian and pedantic and sit around and say oh Donald Trump's a bum and have everybody throw hosannas your way even though you haven't actually said anything. Step up to the plate. There's 1.4 billion people in China without freedoms and you're not going to say a damn word because you make money off shoes and you want to be Michael Jordan. You aren't even close to Michael Jordan. You have criticized Michael Jordan for saying Republicans buy sneakers too yet you serve at the mercy of Nike. You 
want to claim that you are in favor of equality, but people who make your shoes make 20 cents an hour in Asia. You, my friend, are a fraud. And most people in the media won't call you out for being a fraud because they're complicit in building up the LeBron James hagiography which is that he is the modern-day Muhammad Ali. In order to be the modern-day Muhammad Ali, you have to take actually controversial stands and then be proven right. Muhammad Ali stood up in the Vietnam War against it before he knew how the Vietnam War was going to end. That is being right about the major issues of your time. There are a lot of people out there, and I get fired up about this, they say, oh, you're on the wrong side of history. This is about being on the right side of history. If you've ever read a history book, you know how difficult it is to know oftentimes what the right and the wrong side of history is. Especially when you look at history in the prism of 100 or 200 years hence. The right side of history, however, has always been, since Western civilization started, on the side of history that has favored democracy, that has favored capitalism, that has favored freedom, that has given people the right to make their own decisions about who represents them and given them the opportunity to thoroughly speak their mind all over the world. That, my friends, is consistently the right side of history. So the NBA wants to be on the right side of history about transgender bathroom laws, but they don't want to be on the right side of history about the most important issues of our time that we already know represent the right side of history. I got to tell you, all of this NBA claptrap, it's total BS. They will sell anything if you pay them enough. Shut up and dribble, that ain't even it. It's shut up and dribble. We will shut up and dribble across this entire league if you give us enough money, blood money, we'll defend anything imprisoning millions of people who are minorities in China, refusing to allow people in Hong Kong their basic human rights, billions of people living under the thumb of a communist government. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look up Tiananmen Square for one second for me. We got LeBron James and Russell Westbrook metaphorically driving those tanks right over those democracy protesters in Tiananmen Square. And if you aren't educated, educate yourself, please. These are big issues. They aren't partisan issues. Give them credit. Andrew Yang, Julian Castro are running for the Democratic nomination for president. They have condemned the NBA. Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, they are Republican senators. They have condemned the NBA. America stands for freedom, democracy, and the opportunity to elect your own leaders, the NBA stands for money alone and all of their woke claptrap is BS. Okay? This is where the rubber meets the road. And if you are Steve Kerr and you are Greg Popovich and you are LeBron James and you have all been arguing, oh, we are more than athletes. We're going to use our platform. Well, use it. This is when your platform actually matters. When you can address 1.4 billion people and stand up to China and say, I'm going to take less money right now and be on the right side of history in the long run. Standing up to Donald Trump is child's play. There's no consequences. We have complete freedom here. If you hate Donald Trump, roll in in November and vote him out of office. We all have that right here. You speak up against the president of China. In China, he puts your ass in jail. Adam Silver should be ashamed of himself. The NBA should be ashamed of itself. Every single player, coach, executive, and individual involved in working for the NBA should be ashamed that they made Daryl Morey apologize for saying he believes in democracy. This is an outrage. It's rare that real outrage connects with sports. This is shameful by the NBA. Purely despicable, craven, indefensible behavior by the NBA, its executives, its players, and anybody in a position of power. 
You want me to believe you when you say we're more than athletes. You want me to believe you when you say you shouldn't be told to shut up and dribble. Well, ex educate yourself and actually stand up for somebody for once in your life. Use your platform to make a statement. I am fired up about this. And so should anybody else out there who's seen all this woke BS. Oh, we're going to remove the word owner. Oh my God, it's so racially insensitive that the word owner exists. Nobody thinks that's racially insensitive. Nobody's upset by that. Oh, we're going to move the, the All-Star game out of North Carolina. And by the way, I'm not letting the media off here either. Do you know who's broadcasting tomorrow from China? Rachel Nichols. Rachel Nichols said the transgender bathroom bill in North Carolina was a modern day sit-in at the lunch counter movement for the NBA. She compared a transgender bathroom bill to the civil rights movement in North Carolina. She compared the systematic oppression of people based on the color of their skin to something that no one has ever had an issue with in 50 years of American life. And she is broadcasting in China on ESPN tomorrow. You want to talk about a flaming hypocrite? Rachel Nichols praised the NBA to the high heavens when they pulled the All-Star game out of North Carolina and she is broadcasting with ESPN in China this week starting tomorrow. If Adam Silver had any balls at all, if the NBA had any decent leadership, they would pull all of their games out of China, they would stick the middle finger up at them right after they had a press conference and let 1.4 billion Chinese people know that the NBA stood with America and believed that they deserved the right to have democratic freedoms and until they did, we're taking our basketball and we're going to all the other countries in the world that'll be happy to have us. If the NBA had any balls, that's exactly what they would do. If the players had any balls, everybody wants to protest these days, protesting so hot in the player streets, they would refuse to play in China. They would say, you know what? We only play as NBA players in countries where there is democracy. There are plenty of countries with democracy in this world. If you want the NBA, give your people basic human rights. That's a stance I could get behind. Oh, Greg Popovich can tweet, react to Donald Trump's tweets. Oh, Steve Kerr can. Do they actually say anything when the rubber hits the road? They don't say a damn word. Because you know why? They're cowards. They get praised for being brave. But it's not brave to say you disagree with the President of the United States. You got nothing to lose. Half the people are going to say, I love you. Other half are not going to like you. Big deal. Your freedoms don't get impacted. Your pocketbook doesn't even get impacted. Real freedom, real bravery comes when there are stakes. And there are stakes here and the NBA has proven they will sell out for money. Now, I don't know if you read this new owner in New Jersey. This new dude who founded Alibaba or whatever the hell he did in that China kleptocracy to become a billionaire. He wrote a lecturing message to all of Americans about how we've got it wrong in supporting democratic protesters in Hong Kong. That dude is a fraud. And if the NBA had any balls after he wrote that letter, they would say, you know what? We're not going to sell a team to a Chinese fraud like you who's going to lecture us on human rights. You go buy a team in China you go buy a team in one of these other kleptocracies out there where basic human rights don't exist. America's not open for your kind of business. But instead, they bowed at the altar of communist dictatorships and kissed the ring. Adam, Schefter kneel, Adam, Schefter, Adam Silver kneeled and the Chinese government just slapped him right across the face. LeBron James knelt. And the Chinese government just slapped him right across the face. James Harden apologized for his boss liking democracy. It's like a damn prison video right now. 
like ISIS has taken them hostage and is making them say things they don't actually believe. The downside is they actually believe what they're saying. This should be an outrage to anyone who believes in American exceptionalism or believes in our ability to lead this world. I know I'm crazy. And I know everybody's out there all the time saying I hate America now. Well, damn it, I love America. And I love what we represent to the rest of the world. A shining city on the hill, ennobling and espousing the greatest aspects of Western civilization and extending our hand to rise up people into democratic republics across the country. Are we perfect? No. Are we flawed and do we make mistakes all the time? Yes, because we are human. But America represents the best of human advancement that has ever existed. We are the shining light of Western civilization and everything that we represent ultimately comes down to this belief you should be able to pick your own leaders. We don't believe that leaders should be born and given to people. We should be able to select them. I'm fired up about this. You can go read my article about it. You can share this if you, uh, if you enjoy it. But I am fired up about this story. I think it's shameful the way the NBA has behaved. And I think it's also incredibly shameful the way that the woke sports media has shielded players and coaches and owners from criticism for these incidents. If you like this Outkick the Show rant, share it. Because almost nobody else in sports media is going to talk about this. Because we live in an era where most are afraid to say what they actually believe. And sadly, many are not even willing to do their own research to figure out what the truth is. I support the Hong Kong protesters. Daryl Morey's tweet was right. And the NBA is so pathetically shameful that it's disgrace. All right, much less serious stuff out there. Got me all worked up to start off Monday. I'm going to give you some NFL reactions. We're going to go from geopolitical tensions in the NBA to my reactions in the world of the NBA. Uh, sorry, the world of the NFL. Are you guys ready? I'm going to give you a couple of takes on everything. Here are my takes on all the games that took place yesterday. Uh, first of all, the Bengals. I'm sorry to the entire city of Cincinnati, Cincinnati that you have had to deal with the Bengals franchise. I don't know how you do it. I don't know why you do it. I don't know what it's like to be a fan of the worst franchise in the history of American pro sports, potentially. But you might have hit a new low this week when the Arizona Cardinals, who have not yet won a game with their rookie quarterback, Kyler Murray, came on the road and beat you in Cincinnati to drop you to 0-5. That might be a new low, especially considering what we saw against Pittsburgh. Big-time performance by the Cardinals. Congrats. Bengals fans, I'm sorry. I'm going to get to the Bills and the Titans in a second. The Raiders. John Gruden might be the most criticized coach in the NFL so far this year. Really, when you break it down. John Gruden, huge win. Takes his team to London. They take down the Bears. Get to 3-2. and two. How wild is it for the Raiders right now? If the season ended today, the Oakland Raiders would be one of your wild card teams. That's how fine the line is for the Raiders. The Bills would be the other, by the way. The Saints, Teddy Bridgewater 3-0 as a starter. Incredible job by Teddy Bridgewater to come in, win at Seattle, beat the Cowboys, now beat the Bucks. 3-0 sitting at 4-1 with Drew Brees back in a couple more weeks. This is incredible performance. Absolutely incredible performance by Teddy Bridgewater, Sean Payton. Everybody with the Saints organization should be thrilled. The Bucs, eh, even after the win over the Rams, they're still kind of the Bucs. The Vikings, a lot of drama in Minnesota. But Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs, Dalvin Cook, they had a big performance for once. Eagles, the Jets don't even need a football team. The Eagles don't even need to play this week. They already won Sunday. They don't need to play the Jets. We didn't even see that game. The Ravens. Ravens-Steelers. One, I applaud Mike Tomlin for the decision to kick off in overtime. I thought it was 100% the right decision for the way that his team was playing with the third-round quarterback out of Samford, not Stanford, Samford, down in Birmingham, who came in and I thought played pretty well. But in that scenario, after we had the injury to Mason Rudolph and before Juju Smith-Schuster gets the ball punched out, I told you guys that Lamar Jackson was a borderline top 20 quarterback, maybe. It's further proof of that. There's no way that Mike Tomlin, if he actually was afraid of Lamar Jackson, who threw three interceptions in this game, would have ever kicked off in overtime to Aaron Rodgers. He would have never kicked off in overtime to Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes 
or any of the other top unquestioned at, uh, elements of quarterback in the NFL. Lamar Jackson is a flash in the pan. I don't believe in him. The Ravens got the win, but they were very fortunate to do so. Patriots, they may well go 16-0. The Redskins fired Jay Gruden. I don't know that their coach matters, but if I were Dan Snyder, here's what I'd do. I'd pay as much money as it took to go and get Lincoln Riley to be the next head football coach of the Washington Redskins. And if Lincoln Riley came in and we had one of the top picks and he said, much like Cliff Kingsbury did, hey, I love this quarterback. He's perfect to run my offense. I'd move on from Dwayne Haskins like the Arizona Cardinals did moving on from Josh Rosen. It's crazy, a little bit, but the head coach has become so important that if you're going to hire a new head coach and he's got a quarterback that he believes is 100% the right fit, I think the Redskins have to be prepared to do to Dwayne Haskins what the Arizona Cardinals were already prepared to do to uh, Josh Rosen. Go get Lincoln Riley. Tell him he can have any quarterback. To me, if you can get Tua, if the Redskins are as bad as I think they're going to be and you have the number one overall pick in this draft, you go get Tua. You don't worry about the fact that you took a quarterback last year. If the quarterback is good enough, there's no such thing as overpaying. I think that the Arizona Cardinal fans are pretty good and pretty happy so far with what they've gotten out of Kyler Murray. The Panthers. Panthers. Here is a hot take that I don't even think is that hot of a take. Christian McCaffrey, if you were drafting any player in the NFL other than a quarterback for the next three years, I think Christian McCaffrey would have to be the number one overall pick in the NFL. Christian McCaffrey is on pace for the most scrimmage yardage in the history of the league, on pace for 2,700. I believe that Christian McCaffrey is the best player in the NFL other than quarterbacks. Obviously, quarterbacks are on a different level. And certainly, if you want to specify even further, any running back or any wide receiver or any tight end, I am going out and I am getting Christian McCaffrey as my overall number one pick for the next three years. I don't think there's any doubt about it. He has been phenomenal and he's been better with Kyle Allen than he was with Cam Newton. We're headed for an interesting question here if you're a Carolina Panthers fan. Do you bench Kyle Allen when he's won three games in a row this year and Cam has lost eight in a row? Christian McCaffrey looks better with Kyle Allen. The offense looks better. Everything is rolling. I think it's an interesting question they're going to face and it's similar to one that Jacksonville's going to face. Gardner Minshew had another great game. Gardner Minshew was fantastic. Got three chances at the Hail Mary to potentially put that game into overtime. I think the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to face the same question with Gardner Minshew as the Carolina Panthers are. Who gets the job back and who doesn't? Do you go back to Nick Foles or has Gardner Minshew, Nick Foles, the uh, the former Nick Foles himself? Uh, Texans, phenomenal performance by Deshaun Watson. If the Texans can protect Deshaun Watson, they are one of the four best teams in the AFC. Zero doubt. They will win the AFC South and they will go ahead and host a home playoff game. I'm not sure that it matters. Deshaun Watson became the first quarterback to throw five touchdowns with fewer than five incompletions in the history of the NFL. And then after that, he went and hung out with Jalen Ramsey. All right? Jacksonville. Your boy is traveling, Jalen Ramsey, maybe the greatest player in the history of your franchise, to Houston when he's claiming that his back hurts so bad he can't play and he's hanging out, sitting on that couch, looking pretty comfortable alongside of Deshaun Watson. People say, oh, well, Jalen Ramsey was there to see a doctor. Was he also there to go out to dinner with Deshaun Watson and post on Instagram that he was there on the same night that the Jags lost? Sorry, that's a mess. Broncos get the win over the Chargers. Uh, not a lot to say about that game except the Chargers dip to 2-3. and three. Maybe the Phillip Rivers era is almost over. And the Packers go on the road and beat down the Dallas Cowboys. 31-3 to three at one point. I've gone from saying Dak Prescott's worth 35 or $40 million to being back down to he doesn't deserve more than $20 million a year. If the Cowboys give him any more than that, they are crazy. Dak looks like a totally average quarterback in the NFL who the Cowboys are in danger of way overpaying. Finally, the Titans lost to the Bills. They missed four field goals. Went 0 for 4, which is the most missed field goals that have ever occurred in a uh, in an NFL game since the AFL merger. Mike Vrabel cannot be trusted to make basic decisions on the sideline. Last week, he passed on a field goal that would have given the Titans a guaranteed win against Atlanta. 
this week he attempted a 53-yard field goal after his guy had already missed a 33 and a 35-yard field goal. It's inexcusable. It's coaching malpractice. I don't believe that you can trust Mike Vrabel with your team. The Titans have played five games. They have lost the three games they were favored in. They've won both of the games that they were an underdog in. Initially this season, the year was going to be a referendum on Marcus Mariota. I think that has changed. I think Mariota has been fine, probably even better than fine when you consider that he's been sacked 22 times, that his receivers dropped three balls that would have been first downs, uh, that were easy catches. To me, it's become an indictment of the GM on the money that he spent on the offensive line, and it's become an indictment of Mike Vrabel's ability to manage this team. When you actually break down what we're seeing on a week-to-week basis, it's coaching malpractice. Mike Vrabel's not up to the job. Not ready for it. And he needs to find somebody else to make big-time decisions on the sideline. But if that's true, why is he the head coach? That's what you're paying for. You're paying for the ability to make decisions on the sideline in the crucible moment of the game. And Mike Vrabel can't do that. It's unacceptable how bad he has been. Uh, So, also, Taylor Lewan needs to shut his mouth. After the game, Taylor Lewan got called out by the Bills. When you win, you get to talk. That's how every sport works. You may not like it, but when you win, you get to talk. Here are a couple of statements. Jordan Phillips, who had three sacks, asked if he was glad that Taylor Lewan was back. I was really happy Lewan came back today. I'm glad he could be a part of that today. Shaq Lawson said, We knew what his weakness was. He gives up inside moves. And this was an inside game. He's a fake tough guy. He was quiet today. Taylor Lewan is overrated. He's overpaid. He came back after a four-game suspension and the very first play. The very first play that he was back after a four-game suspension, he negated a 28-yard pass play, which would have been the biggest play of the first half for a hold. This dude is insanely overrated. He's a shut his mouth and play And the Titans need to figure out how in the world they've wasted this much money on their offensive line. Big win for the Indianapolis Colts. I got to give you guys props. You helped me win my week on Lock It In. I'll have the crown on at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central, 2.30 Mountain, 1.30 Pacific. Major props uh, to the Colts for going on the road and beating the, uh, the Chiefs like they did. If I'm a Chiefs fan, I'm concerned. You got major issues in your defense. We all know that. And you've also got an inability to run the football. Patrick Mahomes is starting to get dinged up. It's the first time you haven't scored 25 or more in the Patrick Mahomes era. 21 straight games before this you had. You were fortunate to win last week. And we know that the history of the Chiefs under Andy Reid has been they come out of the gate like gangbusters in September and then get progressively worse. The last two weeks, I've seen nothing that suggests they are on the same level as the New England Patriots. I'd be a little bit nervous about that if I were a Kansas City Chief fan. This team ain't ready. Maybe Tyreek Hill coming back will help, but this is something that is now becoming more apparent as we move into the sixth week of the NFL season. Uh, All right, college football. I went up to Georgia, Tennessee. Thanks again to everybody who came up who was a fan of OutKick, who said hi. I had an awesome time Friday and Saturday in Knoxville. For the first 20 minutes of the game against Georgia, I absolutely loved it. Let me say this. I think Georgia's the best team in college football. I have bet them to win the national championship. I think this is their year to win the national championship. But you have to give props to University of Tennessee fans. There are not very many fan bases out there that would show up with 100,000 fans and be as loud as Neyland Stadium was when Tennessee took a 14-10 lead over Georgia. This is one of the most loyal, enthusiastic, and supportive fan bases in all of college athletics. It was still a great environment in Neyland, even though the team is 1-3. I got to give Tennessee props for how they performed, for what that fan base did. And if they play like they did in the first 20 minutes, starting a true freshman quarterback, they're good enough to compete and or win with everybody else left on this schedule except for Alabama. Alabama's a different level. I think Georgia's the best team in the SEC. I think Florida will get whipped. Props to the Gators. The Gators came out and beat Auburn. I didn't think they would. Bo Nix turned the ball over three times. He didn't play well. He played like a freshman. Still hit on the under. Half the blood bank guarantee cash. 
But I think the Gators are going to get walloped on the road against LSU this weekend. Ohio State continued to dominate. Michigan State's an also-ran program under Mark D'Antonio. They don't matter anymore. And Michigan managed to survive with Jim Harbaugh, get the 10-3 win in one of the ugliest games that's been played in major college football all year with the win over Iowa. Uh, Okay, I believe that is the totality. Do I have anything else to talk about? I think that's it. I love all of you. Appreciate you hanging out with me. If you like this show, share it with your friends, particularly my take on the NBA and the way that they've responded here and why it's an indictment of all of woke culture. Kisses, boys and girls. DBAP unless you need to SBAP. I'll see you guys at 4.30 Eastern on Lock It In Well, where I'll have a crown. Uh, I'll give you my gambling picks then while well, I go ahead. I'm on the over and I'm on Cleveland Browns tonight in the game against the 49ers. See y'all. Love you. Thank you, Facebook. Love you guys. See ya.